So SDCC 2019 is coming gone, and with it, probably our last big reveals of the year. We'll get a little bit more in October with New York Comic Con and another third-party panel, but for the most part, this is usually the big one. And I gotta tell you, I found it to be a little lackluster in comparison to previous years. But we're still gonna go through it. As a disclaimer, I always have to say this, but I only really address the things that I'm interested in, that I think are worth talking about, or things that I know that you are interested in, or, or perhaps assume that you're interested in. And with that, let's get started. So the thing that I found most interesting, that Thousand Toys is doing a line of Halo figures. I'm not really interested in it, but Thousand Toys makes a pretty impressive product, and I know there's a lot of Halo fans out there, so I highly recommend you give this a shot if you're into the franchise. Sculpt looks beautiful as well. Now let's get into some of the lackluster stuff. Tamashi Nations was there, and they showed off one new Street Fighter mold, which is Vega, and it does look great, but it's only one. It's like this line is just kind of being kicked along the road like a ball, but it does look good. I guess it's better than Storm Collectibles, which didn't really reveal any new characters, but they did reveal one new figure and mold from the Injustice line, which is that of their Doomsday, which looks great. I do find it weird that they're doing all the big characters for this first. They're also doing four original molds right out of the gate when I had to have 18 Mortal Kombat ninjas, but I'm tired of beating that dead horse. But they're doing Doomsday, Darkseid, Lobo, and Bane, which are going to be all the big characters characters in terms of size and the expensive ones. It just seems strange to me and none of them are super popular characters like you'd imagine you get a Batman, a Superman, and a Wonder Woman almost from the giddy up. However, I happen to know that Storm Collectibles isn't fond of doing female characters which bums me out because Mortal Kombat and DC Injustice have wonderful female characters and I hope that eventually they can get to some. The reason why we've seen more in the Street Fighter line from my understanding is that Capcom has in insisted that they do them. So I hope they will tackle some for the other two. Now I want to move on to Mondo Toys. Now they made their claim to fame with their Ninja Turtle figures that were 1-6 scale and then we saw their He-Man figures which look great and I told you if they do an Evil Lin I'll pick one up. But that didn't come this year. We did get a Hordak though that does look good. Not for me but it does look good. What I found super interesting though and I got to have a serious chat with myself and a look at my logistics is they're doing a 1-6 line of Batman the Animated Series figures which I think is a beautiful idea and they all look super great. I just don't know if I have the space for this sort of collection, but I gotta go downstairs and take a look. I wish them the best of luck with this. Speaking of DC, let's move on to McFarlane, but before we get to his DC stuff, we have to look at his Mortal Kombat stuff. I think this looks terrible. Terrible. Like, oh God. Like, especially next to the Storm Collectible stuff, like this just looks like a joke. I expect expected so much more from this line from this company at least in the sculpt and paint department now don't get me wrong there's definitely paint on these guys but the sculpts are just not good they look young they look amateur they're gonna have to do some pretty impressive stuff to get me on board with this i was hoping to use mcfarland toys to kind of fill in holes for my storm line there's no way i'm doing it now but what I find interesting about the McFarlane company is that I really expected to see some DC stuff. We didn't get any. He did make a statement about it, though. And the statement was he has a three-year contract with DC. He wants to make sure they do as loyal and good a job as possible. Wants them to be accurate to the source material, but also wants to put a bit of his own spin on it, if allowed by DC Comics, but first wants to build up some trust. So I'm still going to be looking for this line, but I, I don't have any faith in it now after seeing these... Uh, Mortal Kombat figures. It just didn't do anything for me, and I'm a huge Mortal Kombat fan. But let's allow that to let us transition into the DC stuff. Mattel is still holding on. <laughs> Best of luck. And look, I think some things are cool. Like they're doing like a retro style Batman and Joker from the 89 Kenner waves. And I actually think the Katana looks pretty clean. I just think it's a little too little, a little too late with this company in this franchise. I'll tell you though, I did see a couple statues that caught my eye. One of which is this McFarlane Batman black and white. It's really cool. The way they did the cape is really cool and smart. But the one that really stole my attention is the Catwoman in the wedding dress from DC Collectibles. Like, I just think that's a stunning design, and I think it was beautifully done here. DC Collectibles isn't the highest grade stuff, but they can make a little statue look good, and I think they've done a great job here. I'll probably end up picking this 
up. Speaking of statues, I did see the Sideshow Gambit and Rogue statue. Now, I, I don't know, man. I think I still want the XM, I believe, Gambit statue, but this Rogue statue looks great. So maybe I'll get one of one and one from the other if they scale properly. And while we're on the statue kick, let's stay with it. Let's go to Kotobukiya, who did show off a couple statues. They're getting back into the 1-6 game kind of heavy, and they showed off some of their Marvel and DC stuff. Their Marvel Black Widow, I thought, looked especially good. Striking pose, nice base, so on and so forth. And they have a Joker coming too, which looks pretty cool. I'm just happy to see them kind of get back into it. The Joker's from Dark Knight's Batman Who Laughs line, and then they have a Nightwing beside him that also looks great. So I've been talking about this recently. I miss the days of 1-6 statues. They've kind of gone away since the Hot Toys explosion. But it looks like some of it's starting to come back, which is nice to see. And then they showed off some Bishojo stuff they're working on with the G.I. Joe franchise. We're getting a Baroness, a Scarlet, and it looks like a Lady J. And I might get these. I might get them just to have a representation of these characters. Baroness is probably one of my my first crushes. What can I say? Leather, black boots, and black hair. That's right up my alley. But I think these look cool. And I think they're nice representations of the characters within that design. Now let's get into some figures. Let's start with NECA. Looks like they're going full steam ahead with these turtles. And I couldn't be happier. The Casey Jones looks great. The April looks great. We got a Rocksteady and Bebop that we knew about, but it looks like they're still in the works. And then what kind of made me super happy were the showcasing of all the villains. We got a Metalhead, Leatherhead, and Slash coming. And this is what I'm talking about. These like obscure characters. And these aren't super obscure, but you know, definitely like B list, C list characters that we rarely ever get. So I hope they can really get some steam behind this. I'm going to support it 100%. And I say that not even being the hugest NECA fan, but I'm definitely backing this with everything I have because I want this to succeed because I'd love to have this collection fleshed out a bit. And I think they've done a tremendous job. I mean, it's 100% tune accuracy, which isn't the most elegant of designs, but it definitely hits on that nostalgia. I am curious why it, it's so rare that we get a Splinter figure, and we still haven't had one announced for this line, but I'll be watching it very closely and buying it and supporting it with every unique release. Mezco was in the building, per usual, and they didn't really show anything that I'm interested in. I'm not the biggest fan of this company. I think they do some things really well, but I think they do a lot of things kind of as well as they can, which unfortunately is just not quite good enough for me. However, the Gambit does look good. I worry about the coat with those soft goods at that scale. It's just a hard thing to sell, but that face sculpt, dead on the money. I'm a huge fan of the character. So maybe I'll pick him up. But what I really want to talk about is my buddy Chris from Crashbox Customs did a lot of the diorama work for this show. So I've included some of my favorites here. This Aquaman one, the Popeye one, and the Warriors one. I've got to watch this guy kind of work behind the scenes and grow and evolve. And it's really great to see him get a little bit of shine. And I, I wish nothing but continued success for him. Really tremendous display value. But one last thing I want to talk about regarding their reveals is this 89 Batman man they did not sure if it's good enough for me to get but it is tempting just something about that design it always kind of works for me but congratulations to crash box customs well earned my friend now let's get into some of the bigger brands we'll start with hasbro's star wars stuff we didn't get a lot of reveals we got the sith trooper which we'll be talking about later this week i hope and we got a look at a dagobah luke kind of jedi training but nothing much else and i think we all know the reason for this it's because it's a movie year and they keep all that stuff under wraps and I wish they would start letting a bit of it out. Stop keeping it so sacred and secretive. A couple things I do want to discuss though. For one, the Star Wars Galaxy of Adventures figures. Like I really wish they just wouldn't waste their time with this stuff. Like if it gets kids into it then cool, it's worth it, but I just don't know if it does. I don't know if it's successful and I feel like if I was a kid this would be the last thing I want. Now at least this is backed by some sort of fiction, but at the same time it's like I remember being a kid. This would have been a huge turnoff to me. I wanted something that looked like the movie, not something that looked like this. But, you know, I didn't have a cartoon.
cartoon to watch when I was a kid either, so maybe it's all connected, but yeesh, I just wish they wouldn't bother. Now, they did show off a new Hyper Real figure to kind of coincide with their Vader. I'm in on this. I'm going to give it a shot. I don't know how I'm going to feel about it when it's all said and done. This is their attempt at kind of encroaching into that Hot Toys higher-end collectible arena. You can see they're utilizing soft goods. They're trying to really get the face right. I'm just not sure if they can do it. They showed off some of their skeletons and stuff. It looks like they have metal skeletons underneath and all that. So like I have hopes, like my fingers are crossed, but I'm not 100% confident with this. But I just have a hard time saying no when it comes to this franchise. So we'll see. Unless it looks like this, of course, then I'm out. I do want to give a shout out to GTP Toys. Their claim to fame was kind of these space walls. It's kind of like an underground thing almost. Like people love them, use them for display and they got picked up and now they're doing like proper licensed Star Wars settings. And it looks like they're going to light up. It looks like they're going to be awesome. If the measurements are right, are they like, I'll definitely pick up a few. I wish them the best. I think that's pretty awesome that they got picked up. Now we'll move on to Marvel Legends and they had a pretty impressive show. Wasn't their biggest show I've ever seen. And unfortunately, a lot of their stuff that they're making now, I'm just not interested in because my Marvel Legends collection is coming to a close. But what's going to help with that closure are some of these reveals, namely the strong guy, which I've been joking about on this channel for years and they finally did it. So bravo. We're also getting an updated Dr. Doom, which is cool. We're getting kind of a classic vulture, which a lot of people have been looking for and pretty much closes the door on most of the popular spider villains. We're getting a Polaris and Havoc two pack, which is pretty awesome. And then we're getting a Wolfsbane. Now we're getting some other options for X characters as well, but I'm less interested in them and more interested in the Wolfsbane. This concludes the 90s X Factor team. It's done. That feels very good. Now we just got to get this X Force and this X Caliber situation sorted and I can kind of move on with my life. One thing that is kind of irritating though is that we're getting this Jean Grey, but it's a three pack. So I got to get another Wolverine and another Cyclops. Now to be fair, I was told that the Jim Lee Cyclops is a hard one to get. So maybe it deserves a reissue, but man, I just hate paying for three figures when I only want one. It's my lot in life. And not for nothing, I think this Squirrel Girl looks pretty cool. And I like her little bike and her little squirrels. So I'll probably pick that up as well. And now I want to move on to the company that I think stole the show. And that's Hot Toys. They killed this show and left it stinking naked and screaming. Like D'Angelo in that video. <laughs> Sorry. That doesn't mean they didn't have some odd choices, though. And one of them is this Robin from Batman Forever. Like, God bless the guy that's buying that. Not me. The other one is this Flash from the TV show. Now, I know this show's pretty popular, but I just don't have any interest in it. Looks good. Both of them look good, to be fair. It's just not for me. I know a lot of people are excited that they're kind of redoing a lot of the Nolanverse stuff. I know I am because I need the Two-Face, so that'll fill a big void in my collection. But they're also doing a Joker, which goes for big money on the aftermarket. And I think the Joker does have some improvements, namely the head sculpt. It looks a lot better. But I mean, this company has come a long way. They showed a lot of Marvel stuff, but unfortunately, I'm just not that interested in any of the things that they showed. I think I'm going to draw the line at my Marvel Hot Toys collection with Endgame. Just do that that initial kind of 10-year run. But they had a ton of Star Wars stuff, including a new Bespin Luke, which is another major hole in my collection. A Padme. I love to see the prequels get some love. And this Padme looks good. We predicted it was going to be the white suit of some buddies of mine and I like we've been talking about do them doing a Padme for years and really it's got to be the white suit first it always is so that's a little boring but I'm happy to see it a battle droid which I'll be passing on but does look good Kit Fisto this gives me a ton of hope that they might be going balls to the wall with Star Wars prequels couldn't be more excited love the Darth Maul from Solo even though that the reveal hit a couple days before the show it does look great I've already pre-ordered mine but dude yo dude dude I'm 1,000% getting this Wicked. It looks awesome to me. I'm glad that they're like swinging for casting a huge net over this franchise. Bravo. And lastly, the Transformers stuff. Now, they showed a lot of new stuff that I don't really care about. They showed Studio Series stuff and all that, which like, I, I don't even know what's new and what's not, to be honest with you. They may not have showed anything new. It may all be new. I just, I, I have no concept of what they've done and what they haven't done. It's just not for me. But they did show some cool stuff regarding their 
siege line and some other stuff. So let's talk about it. They showed this G1 set of Autobot dinosaur tapes that were like Japanese and we never really got here. And it opened up my mind to all the possibilities they could do with some of this G1 reissue stuff. They always do sound waves and primes and the whole bit, but like why not do some of the European exclusive, Japanese exclusive stuff that we never really got in the States? I'm sure they'd have success with it. I would imagine anyway. Now for their siege line, they're doing a toy accurate reflector called refractor, which looks, I mean, it looks like the toy with the exception of the face sculpts. I do kind of wish they just did the face sculpts. Like just go all the way, like in for a penny, in for a pound, like either do it or don't do it. But I do kind of get irritated by these like half stepped approaches. Now I will say I'm not in, for, I probably wouldn't be in for it anyway. So ultimately I'm not the person whose opinion really matters in regards to what they should do and what they shouldn't do. I just feel like if I was super into the toy version of these guys, that's what I would want. Not the cartoon version redecoed. It's just a couple heads, Max. Switch it up. Then we got a flywheels redeco of the Autobot tapes. And I think this works. I mean, it's not right. You know what I mean? But I think it works. And I think it looks pretty good. So cheers on them. I do think this spinster looks great. I mean, I'm not in. There's definitely, you know, the G1 is there inspiration wise. The IDW is there inspiration wise. Like I think they did a really good job in kind of capturing the different elements of that character. So good on them. They showed off a blue streak and that looks fine. It looks a little closer to G1 than I would prefer in regard to this line. Like this line is kind of, you know, G1 inspired, but a departure from G1. And I think that's kind of a smart way to do it because it helps keep a little bit of interest. You know, uh, Tommy Farland keeps coming up in, in this episode, but Tommy Farland once said the reason why he switched the spawn stories up for the movie and the cartoon or whatever is because the most boring thing you can do is tell the same story over and over. And I felt like Hasbro was kind of taking that approach, taking the classics and just kind of tweaking them a bit. But this blue streak does look a little bit more business as usual to me than a lot of their other Siege stuff. So I'm not sure how I feel about it, but it does look good objectively. And then they showed an Impactor, which I think looks great. Huge hollow parts there on the leg, which I'm not crazy about. And then there's some drama surrounding the head sculpt that I heard a bit of scuttlebutt about. Peanut hit me up and said the one with the IDW head will be part of a three pack that comes with the clear mirage and the repaint of cog into some, he says, some guy named Power Dasher. But then the other one, I guess, is going to be the standard release. And that's a bummer because I think that the impactor from IDW is probably the most popular. So it's the one that people will want. And I guess that's why they packed them with the repacks and, uh, you know, just business as usual, I guess. But that's that's a bummer. I feel for those guys that really want this figure and then have to buy. It's, it's the same boat I'm in. If it makes you feel any better, if you need an ear or shoulder to cry on, feel free to hit me up because I'm doing the same thing regarding this Jean Grey from Marvel Legends. And the last thing I want to talk about from the Transformers reveal are these Voyager class Walmart exclusives that have the cell shading paint applications to both the Prime and Megatron. That is incredibly smart. When you know that your budget won't cover a fully finished figure in regard to paint, and you know that the engineering is clunky, and you know that the kids are gonna be messing about with it, and you don't want paint flaking off all over the place from some kid mucking about with them on the floor, I think this is a super smart way to do it. Look at the paint that they've done for these two figures and tell me that doesn't look like it walked right out of a cartoon that we've never seen. It looks fantastic. Now, who knows what it'll look like in hand, but conceptually, I got to applaud them. This looks like the pride, care, and attention that they put into some of their other lines that I don't feel like they've been putting into Transformers. I feel like they're putting it into this. I think this is really big of them. I think this is really cool of them. I think it's smart, and I think it looks good. So I'd actually would want to look at one of these eventually when they come out for review purposes. And that'll do it for this year. We'll be talking a lot more about the reveals and the media stuff on Nerd Rage this week. So feel free to check that out. And otherwise, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Take care.